Well, hello, my friends. This is Gladys from Gladys Garden in Heart of a Gypsy. Thanks for stopping by. Today I bring you a project that I am going to turn in a tutorial for Tsunami Rose Designs. And I talked to you, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this box before, or if I showed it to you. This is the box that we will be making. Let me bring this down so I can put it down. Um, this is the box that we'll be making. And it opens this way. In this way and you house and excuse me an album inside so <clears throat> this box I made it a while back but I never published it anywhere so this time will be my time to do so but at the same time I'll be doing a free tutorial for all of you so I do hope you can join us and um, enjoy the process so to begin with I like to tell you some of the things that you're going to be using or needing you're going to need four 12 by 12 chipboard medium to heavy chipboard um, let me see if I can get one here so you're gonna need four of this ones a 12 by 12 medium to heavy mid, medium to heavyweight chipboard okay so four of those three <clears throat> well, okay before before I go into measurements you're going to be needing Whatever paper line you're using, I'm going to be uh, using this discarded ephemera myself. And let's see, what else you're going to be needing? You're going to be needing some inks of your choice. You're going to be needing some the glossy. I'm going to use the glossy because I don't have anybody anything else. But I usually would use normally I would use the the matte medium. But today I'm using the gloss medium. You're going to need some liquid glue. You're going to need half an inch and also a quarter of an inch score tape, your ATG gun, a ruler, scissors, and you're going to need about three pages of 12 by 12 uh, cardstock, any color, neutral color, either black, tan, or any neutral color that you would have solid color that would go with your papers that you decide to use. You're going to cut them at strips of 2 by 12, okay? So right now, so far, what I've done, I put tape on 12 of them, meaning two sheets, but I'm still going to use the other one, okay? And I already score them in the middle, so you cut them at two inches, and you're going to score them at the one inch. And you all see me do this many, many times, okay? Um, so let me give you some measurements now. Let me put some, move some stuff that I'm not going to be using quite, quite yet. So let me give you the measurements for this um, box. I am making this one just a tiny wincy bit smaller than this one, like about quarter inch altogether. The reason is because I am using those printables by Tsunami and Rose Designs, and obviously they're going to print on papers that are eight by twelve. I mean. Um, Eight and a half by eleven. So what you want to do, you want to go where you were, where whatever software you're using to print your papers, just print them at. Um, I go eight and a half by eleven, eleven in in a third or something like that. So I'm just trying to maximize my usage of my page. I'll show you one. So this is what they look like when I get them. So I can only trim that little and I'm using the whole thing as much. So what I did, I trimmed my paper or my chipboard to exactly 10 and 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. So you're really making it just a quarter smaller than what your paper should be. That's why you do want to maximize um, the, the usage of your paper when you print it, if you're going to be printing. If not, don't worry about it. But the measurements of this one again are 10 and 3 quarters. Oops. If I put it the right, 10 and 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. Okay. You're going to cut three of those pieces. Okay, so I already got three in here. Then you're going to be cutting out of your chipboard. You're going to have some leftover strips, so you can utilize those two. But you're still going to need that fourth one for a couple more. So you're going to cut four pieces at, I'll give you the measurement. It's ten and three quarters by two. So four at ten and three quarters by two. 
and then you're going to be needing two pieces of eight and a quarter by two. Yeah, eight and a quarter by two, and you need two pieces of those. All right, so let's get ourselves together. I'm going to be using, I'm first of all going to be using one of my first um, pieces here, the big one. Once I had already cut this one at eight and I think I got it a little too big. Let me see. Eight, eight and a quarter. Yeah. So now I'm going to do my trimming or my snipping at the ends so you can have a nice even place. Okay. So I know I'm going to need those two right now and two more for later. So I'm going to take care of those first. Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead. So once you have this one trimmed on each side, you're going to remove the tape backing for for just one side. Hold your piece and, and in this position, while you already done the crease in here, just kind of put it in the groove and it just slides in. And that way you know you're not missing any and you're not leaving any bubbles. Okay, so I just adhere it to the back of that. And I'm gonna do that consecutively consecutively on all of them on all corner and all uh, four sides I meant to say but it's not coming out correctly okay so there's that now I have to cut this ones so they are at so this ones are would be eight and a quarter sorry and I know I need two of those for right now. Don't throw this one's away. This one's because we're going to be needing them. Most of the times when I make a project, I try to calculate my measurements. Try. I, I just said try. I didn't say I'd always succeed. But try to figure out measurements that whenever I have a leftover of something, it can be applied or used within the same project in another level so I try that but you know sometimes you just can't help it it just doesn't go especially when it's a project that I haven't designed well obviously it wasn't I wasn't the maker so all right let's do this one right here again go into the groove it's a little big so we'll just trim it just a tiny bit here and I'm going to do this nip because it's important for the, I don't want to have any bulkage in there. Okay, and this one too, let me, yeah, perfect. All right, so now we're going to start grabbing those long pieces, thin, the long. Okay, so let's do, oh, and I forgot to mention bone folder, you're going to need one. I always use one. Just grab your piece of chipboard and go over on top with the the back side of your bone folder. Don't use this very sharp edge because you don't want to tear your paper. And you want to burnish those edges. It's almost like giving it a nice ironing to the paper so you don't create any, any bulkage whatsoever. And very nice. So at the time of bringing the paper out to put the other pieces together, this puppy is not going anywhere, okay? All right, so this, the next step, it's very important because this one is going to be the flap that is going to cover the whole thing. Oh, actually, I'm lying to you. Never mind. Skip that. That's going to, I'm going to put that on the outside, so... Just pretend you're not here. All right, you're going to leave about a about a quarter of an um, eighth of an inch between, oops, between each side like that, so you have enough, you know, movement of this um, sides. If you put it next to each other like this, you're not going to have movement. It'll be really tight, and you don't want to have that. Okay, about that eighth of an inch there very nice and I'm working eighth of an inch just because you know the chipboard is the medium chipboard it's not the it's not the it's not the heavy heavy probably will go a little more 
and it also depends on the project but for this one you're just going to get about an eighth of an inch and get my last one here so I'm hoping this project goes fast enough at least the box okay and then we're going to work on work on our pages for the for the album okay so there it goes now we're going to be using remember those little pieces that we used in here those are two inches so we're going to trim them they're not two inches I mean what I need is two inches so let's go there and then I can trim those puppies okay What's that and I only have two and I need four so that's okay we can cut another piece okay so now let's figure this one out I'm just gonna cut it because I need a little bit more and this one again so I can have four of those to cover the corner ones okay so now let's cut the let's do our little snips now let me see if I can move this camera a little lower there there just a tiny bit because I am too close to myself it seems like every time I move my arms I get out of frame okay okay so all the snipping is done that sounded like a dog that is chipping, huh? All right, so those are done. What we're going to do now is cover these edges too, because we don't want any, anything with raw edges. Trim here, because I know this one this one measures eight and a quarter, and I have to make another one because obviously I don't have enough. I cut so many and I put tape on so many because I don't want to overly use my tape, obviously. It's not cheap, if you know what I mean. Okay, let me clear some of all this debris that I got going on in here, or else I won't be able to work. I won't be able to see any of my stuff. And the backings of this tape just gets everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to get grab one of those, another of those uh, trimmings, the 2 inches by 12, and we need to put some tape on it. So I'm using the quarter of an inch, and I'm doing a strip on each side, close to the close to the the score line but not on the score line very important and yes I could use the one inch tape um, but it's too, it's too you know it'll cover the whole thing it'll be too close to the score line and I don't like that so all right let me see if I'm going to have enough in this one Let me see if this other one that I have in here would cover. No, it will not. So I have to make another one. Sorry, guys. And I think I'm out of tape. I think I have to open another one. And I love this tape. I just, just love this tape. Oh, yeah. Just finished. All right. I have, I'm lucky I have another one. This is the one I use the most, so this is the one I'm always, you know, buying extras of. And I'm still always ran out. That matter. Oops, there it is. Couldn't see it or find it. Half blind, so. Okie doke. Okay. So let's measure it again with my eyeballing eyeballing method. 
I'm really bad with that. You know, as long as you know that you have to cover that whole thing, many times it's just so easy to do it that way. Okay, done. Let's do the other one. And it's time to close this box up. We gotta do some staining in here inside before we can totally close it, but I'm going to put these little pieces now. All right, so you wanna grab your box and you're gonna just choose a corner. I'm gonna choose this one as easier for me. And I know my, it's gonna go right in there. Oops, I put the one that didn't have any, that I didn't peel. There, sorry, goodness gracious, I couldn't grab that. Okay, same thing over here. Turn it around, choose another corner. And that way by the time it's time to close this box, all these babies are there. And get ready with your um, liquid glue. We're getting ready to use it. All right, so there's all the all the fourth ones right there. Okay. Again, let me do some cleaning because the backing of this tape is just so scandalous and just goes everywhere. All right, then. So let's do some staining. Let me get my staining. And I am using today the Distress Paint Wellness Stain, okay? So what you're going to do is do this to the whole thing, to the edges, inside and out. Well, not on the outside. I meant to see on this side and in this side. That's what I meant to say, but I might not. Was I in frame when I said that? I don't know. Let me see. Okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to do a line here, inside here, and inside here. And then another one here, here here, here. Now you're going to go on the sides here. Because those are the ones that show up inside. Very nice. Alright, then let me... What did I do with the lid? Because I know these puppies should not... Oh, there it is. They shouldn't be open like that. Okay. So there you have it. Now we're going to utilize our glue, liquid glue. So you want to put glue inside this, this, um, you know, where the hinges are. And then a little bit here on each of this um, hinges because that's to keep the wall up. This will allow your project to, by the time it dries, it'll dry really, really firm, okay? Totally firm. All right, so now I'm going to, before I do that, I am going to put this in here. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of stain at the ends. Nothing major, but even though it's already on the dark side, that's not funny, honey, the dark side, huh? Right, let's put some glue. Oh, I got the wrong uh, glue bag. Oops, I think I'm putting some stain on my page. Who cares? It's very dark. And um, I want you to know that this new ones are really, really nice, but they stink. They don't stink like glue or, or paint. It just it has like um something that has gone wrong you know like um like rotten food almost it's really funky how they smell all right so there you have it right there right there and now i'm going to be cutting the inside parts 
you know what I'm gonna leave those for later because I don't want this glue to dry on me the first thing you're going to do is close this ones but you know what they can close because we did not burnish so don't forget to burnish don't forget like I did okay there we want something that is nice and crisp and no bubbles anywhere else I think we did that one but this one we didn't do so I kind of pull it down and then I go over it and it kind of just irons it okay now we can do this See, I don't have to do much effort because the paper already knows where to go. It's been ironed in that position. So it doesn't leave any bubbles on top whatsoever. Okay. There's that. And these. And voila. Okay. And now at this point, we're just going to close our pages so let's remove the backing on this one oops all right and they're just going to meet corner to corner it's not like they go on top of each other or anything like that it's that way you change the sizes of the box and you don't want that okay meet corner to corner and sometimes you just gotta move them a little bit until they give you you know corner to corner like that I don't know how to explain it like this, but in a, you know, at an angle. It's really difficult to explain it, but I'm sure you guys get it. You're you're smart enough. Sometimes they don't just match, and you're like a millimeter here or there. You just gotta move them until they match, and then glue them in that position. If you don't make it, fake it. That's what I say. Try your best. All right. So you still see the glue there, but it'll dry completely, completely white. Um, clear. I meant to say. So there's your box. Nice, crisp. All right, everywhere. Right. Okay. So now, again, let me clean up. This tape is just. Whoosh. All right. So I am going to cut out some of this ones for the inside. So I'll remove a little bit of that white stuff in there. And we're still going to stain them anyways, you know. But still. All right. So I know it's going to be, we're going to cut, they're not going to be two, but they're going to be one and three quarters. And I'll give you the other measurements right now. Two of those. Those are the long sides. Okay. So they're one and three quarters by ten and a half. This is just perfect for it. And then now I'm gonna two smaller ones, but still at one and three quarter wide. Need another one. And these ones are going to be if the box there was eight and a quarter, so it's going to be right at eight. Okay. Now let's stain those ones in the end. Just so they don't look, you know, so washed. one 
I am just so dirty when I start staining. I get it all over me. In fact, I've, there's been time that I go back to the bathroom to wash my hands and then I lift up my eyes to look and I have it even in my face. Believe it or not. Okay. So we're going to put one place in here. So you're going to keep it a quarter, you know, smaller from anything else, obviously. We know that. Okay, there's that one. I always cut my matting a quarter inch smaller than, than the actual piece that I am matting. And there it is. It's very nice. As you can tell, I'm using whatever paper I already had there dirty, and I just flipped it and printed on it. Well, my my printer was giving me problems, and I had just changed my um, my ink, so I know it wasn't the ink, but it was printing practically white like a ghost. And I go, okay, no, something is definitely wrong here. Not with all the expensive cartridge I just put in there because ink is so expensive you know they sell you the printer for just about nothing and they kill you on the ink so what are we gonna do you know we need to print all right about a quarter inch smaller closer there and voila so it's all nice on the inside all right so now <clears throat> what we're going to do is grab two more of this and we are going to cut them at eight and a quarter by two they're already two so ten I'm sorry not it's ten and three quarters that's what you're gonna cut them at I just lie to you Okay, and I know I'm going to need more, so let me, I need another one here, and this one is not score, so I have to score those ones. I need four. Let me bring my score board and score a couple more. I'm just lazy, I try not to score that many or I should have done them all really why well. that's that's exactly what I should have have done so these would these are the pieces that we cut we uh, cut from the 12 by 12 sheet I cut them at 2 by 12 so strips of 2 inches and then I score them at 1 and I'm just going to score them all so I don't have to be you know So this makes three. Three of the. You're gonna need three. Oh, I don't think more, but three of your cardstock, the 12 by 12s, just to do hinges. All right. Is this one already cut to? No, it's not. Is it? No, this one I cut to that. Okay. So let me cut one more. To a to ten and three quarters, and you'll see why I need those. And I'm gonna cut two more. Do I need those two? Yes, two more at eight and a quarter, and put the other stuff away. And it's always best to cut a little extra ones. You know why? Because you can tear one by by accident. And truly, you don't want to go there. So, all right. So I am going to utilize my tape, and since I'm putting enough tape on several of them, I need to put it on my arm like a, like as if it was a, like as if it was a bracelet because I don't have to be holding it that way. And it goes a little faster, I think. Well, that's that's what I think in my mind. It doesn't mean that it's true. My 
goodness, I'm just so hungry right now. I haven't had uh, lunch and it's already past dinner time. I get so wrapped up in my work that I even forget, literally, until my tummy starts saying, hello. Talk to me, you know. So it's definitely talking to me. So if you hear a rumble, sorry, it's not something else. It's my stomach wants to eat. All right. All right, let's do now the quarter inch. And you know, can you get away with just one tape? Sure you could. You can use two of the quarter inch too. Um, I just like to have enough tape. I don't want things to come apart. And I think if you watch several of my videos or other tutorials, you'll see that I I don't think it's overkill. Maybe some people may think it's overkill. I call it security. I call it job security. That way people keep coming back and seeing my videos or buying tutorials or just liking the stuff I make, you know. Um, I don't want them to come apart. I want them to last. I mean, I was I was um, doing another tutorial just the other day and um, Phil, I was recording and uh, and we were I was discussing the fact that uh, you know how important it is to have um, acid free well I think it's important to a certain degree I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal I don't use any of my of my vintage um, you know original pictures I always I have them saved up in my computer I I um, I scan them and save them so I don't have to use my my normal ones you know and if I don't use my normal well who cares you know you can just always print another one but it's true you know if if it really bothers you I say yeah knock yourself out with it you know it's just it's just not that big of an issue for me you know but I do try to buy as much as I can but sometimes I think you know, like in a box like this. Here's a here's an example. I am going to make an album that goes in here. So, okay, so the pages in those albums will be acid free, even though everything we use, I'm using is acid free, except for this printables, because that's not acid free. That comes straight from my printer, you know? And so are the pictures I'm printing. That's none of it is acid free as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. Again, this this there's my spiel board for the day. All right, so let me clean up in here again. I make a mess really fast. All right. I know I I saw this little tear in here and I was just about to cry. I just bought it, and they're not cheap, you know. So, okay. We're going to be using the other two that we cut out at the same measurement. Get one of the big ones, or the ones that measure 10 and 3 quarters. We're going to be doing the same thing that we did before. Oops. Okay. You're going to put it on both sides. And we're going to score two. Okay, and this one too. And I have to be changing my uh, my battery is flashing. Okay, I'll try to hurry up before I can, you know, stop and charge the battery again. Okay. Okay, we know this ones are fit because we just cut them at that uh, proper size or at the needed uh, size. Now do the same thing for the other one. Oh, I didn't cut enough for that one. Oh my lord, what am I thinking? Okay, this one can fit in here. Oh yeah, I can use that little piece. 
that I don't want to use extra tape because I don't need any more hinges after this ones. So I'll just put that in there and put tape on this ones. I hate when I forget things like that. So, you know, kind of, um, no, not kind of, they're self-explanatory or common sense. I don't know what was I thinking. I think I was thinking, I was thinking that I wanted to finish. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Oops, this is not the tape. I got the wrong one. I got the one eighth. That's really, really thin. Oh, and we are going to use that baby. But that's for the album. So I'll give you more instructions when we get ready to make the album for this box okay it's not going to be a fancy album at all whatsoever because it's really about the box okay do you creases trimming there we go done okay how's my battery gee 10 minutes okay This is too big, so I have to retrain it. Okay, put it in the groove. Okay, so now let me clean up again because I've already created another mess. All right, here we go. Okay, so remember when I said to you this next step is very, very important? Well, this is actually the one. This is the one. And you know what? We didn't need four of these. We needed only two. Wow. Okay, well. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, we forgot to. There's my bone folder. We need to do our burnishing on the edges here. So everything is nice and ironed down. So the paper is hitting that itch and there's no bubbles in there. Okay. That one will train this one too. It's kind of high, tar hard when they're a little tall there. seven minutes till my battery goes dead okay okay now what you are going to do is close this one this one and this one on both okay so now we got this one there this one here and last okay here comes a step that is very very important Let me throw some things. okay when we did the first one here to put this wall over you know to connect it with this um, bottom piece we left only about an eighth um, of an inch if you remember uh, we're going to leave a quarter now, so it's not quite the inch, okay? So you're going to go there, and there's about a quarter of an inch. And this is... Oh, no, 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 what am I doing, what am I doing? Skip this part. Give me a second here. Give me a second. There's a second. There's why we needed the other two. Hello! Oh my goodness, my goodness. I am just not with it. I feel like I need to start this whole video all over again. Okay, so here you're still going to leave about an eighth of an inch. And where is your next page? So now we need to know which one goes on which side. So this one is going to go here. So actually we can close this part right here. 
because that's just a, an edge that we're going to be covering with paper later on. So this one is going to go here and on the other one is going to go here. So I'm going to close this one so I don't get myself um, confused. So I know which one is who. I don't know if that makes any difference or sense to you, but it's working in my head somehow right now. And see, I still ended up with a little bubble there. Not a huge one, but still a bubble. All right, so easy to create those if I don't score or burnish properly. All right, so I have to do it this way so because I can only work with my right more. Still about an um, eighth of an inch. So they're going to go like this, okay? So now we need to have these last two pieces. So again, you do need those three pieces of, chip, of um, cardstock to be cut into two by twelves. I do hope I'm not completely making you crazy because I think I'm making myself crazy. I think it's a fact I have no sugar in my brain right now. <laughs> I'm hungry. I have some juice in here. I'm going to have to kind of just drink, gulp it so I can get some, like a rush of sugar into my brain. Because I am being a little spastic here. Well, not spastic. I'm like forgetting details I already know. Common sense details, that's exactly what I meant to say. And that's not what I want. Alright. Alrighty then. So, let's get those two flaps. We're going to cover them. Same thing as we did with the last ones. I gotta trim this. Okay, and I'm gonna put them together so I can trim both of them at the same time. I know they're in there, both of them. Now, since I have my little snip that I've done in there, we can throw this away. Now, let's do this little corner snips. Okay, so I snipped the corners already. I was out of frame there, sorry. All right, but that's all I've done. ones away okay so nothing has changed up to now we're going to put that in there and this one on the other on the other um, piece of chipboard here okay so here they are so this box will sit right like that basically and we have to cover those corners up here so that's a two. Let me go this way. I knew there was a reason we needed more. I don't know what was I thinking. So we need four of these ones The measure two by two. These ones are no good. So I'm glad that we ended up using all the ones that we had. Really nice. And nothing was wasted. Another one and one more. So that's the only thing that we didn't have to throw away. Okay, let's do the little snips on all these ones. So when you do your snips, I mean, I should have mentioned this before, but it's common sense. Um, you don't want to trim into the size. You just want to trim to the corner and that's all. You want to meet in the corner, not trim part of the corner. Because if you trim part of the corner, you ended up with pieces that are not the proper size that you actually need. Okay. Here we go. And we're going to need a little bit also of... No, we don't need the... We don't need the... I thought we were going to use the glue, but no. Okay, we can close this ones right now. But let's do a little bit of a burnishing and what do I do with my bone folder? Oh, there it is. It was hiding from me. Okay, there it is. Close that and we'll put it over here too. I'm 
right there. A little bit with a palm folder. All these little steps, huh? Well, those little steps make a difference. So must do them. Okay. A little bit of burnishing. And the brother's ready to be laid down there. burnish and ready to put down ay 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 let me just clean all this because I can't take all this mess all these little miniature papers in there okay so let's let's put one together first so here is the final step important step that we're going to create we're going to put some paint in here and we'll do it on the other one too so it starts to dry and you're going to put it in here too forgot on the other one it's because those edges will be raw to a point obviously okay so, I am going to remove the backing of this one. So, it is at this point that you are going to leave exactly about a quarter of an inch. Do you want to know what is a quarter of an inch? Is this one, this tape. So, if it's hard for you to eyeball it, let's look what I'm going to do. I am going to put this quarter of an inch tape right along the edge. And that will give you an idea. Okay, you can do that. And then you don't have to, I'm going to remove it because I know how far to go. But you don't have to remove it yet. You can remove it after you put the, your, you know, your piece in there. So just give yourself that extra like like I said a quarter of an inch can you see that gusset right there there see it's about a quarter of an inch and why we need it because this puppy has to go this way and it's at the outside that's why Oops, sorry sorry there did I second right there I did not put that together correctly there but don't leave more than a quarter, okay? Because if you do, this is going to look like you have another corner coming this way, okay? So just that quarter of an inch, and that's all. Now this one is ready for me to do also. I gotta turn it the other way because I cannot work on this side. It has to be my right that is dominating, you know, my my work. All right. So can you see it right there? And this is what's going to tell you right here, you know. There. And this this one right here could have gone a little over right here, but it's it's really not an issue. Once you start doing different measurements, you can forget things. So this one is the same thing, you just can't see it because it's all black, but we're going to do all those edges too. So it doesn't matter at this point. Okay, so here is the inside part of this box let me show you Ta -da! here we go so right there you can see them both so now what were you what you're going to do you're going to do we're going to do all the edges with color whether you were using black or whatever color you decide that you were going to use it doesn't matter you know as long as you're getting all the edges that's like your stain or your distress edgy, edgy, you know. So don't forget to get this top. Okay. And I don't want to put it down there because it's going to stain everything else in there. It's still wet. And it's too long of a project here, so let me fold it over. So 
until there over here now I can flip it over and go on the other side here on top and then later I'm gonna do the outside I think I did that already yeah okay now let's go here too let's bring it flat again and let's go do this inside here and then this one right here I mean it doesn't have you don't have to use this one that I'm using but whatever is it that you decide to use just give it a little color there. Because your paper that we're going to use to mat is going to be cut, a little, like I said, just a quarter inch um, smaller. Okay, so let's do this right here, right there this edge. Now let's fold this one over. Bring it out because I cannot work on that side. Okay. And then we'll just check that all your edges are, you know, done. That's why I do like this ones, but I, I need to have my vintage uh, photo. I just don't have that one yet because um, you know I bought all this all the acrylic paints that he had before when they were not as good meaning they had the defect that they all dried out so why well, use them and to be honest with you yes they did dry it out well the lid dries out okay but you can always put some more let me tell you what I did you might think I'm nuts but that's what I did I put a little bit of water on the lid I took the lid out of the paint out of the bottle and I wetted it and then I wrapped it with wet um, paper and then I put it on the microwave for like a couple of seconds and <laughs> it helped so you know I've done all kinds of crazy stuff that's one of them all right my dears I am out of battery completely so I have to get going and I'll be right back with you guys